good day friends in this lecture we are going to see the operation of a three phase voltage source inverter operating in 180 degree mode an inverter is a device which converts the input dc voltage into a output bidirectional ac voltage there are single phase and three phase inverters in the case of single phase inverter the input is dc and the output is a bidirectional alternating waveform there is only one waveform available at the output of a single phase inverter whereas in a three phase inverter the input is dc and the output will be having three waveforms each displaced from one another one another by 120 degrees for example in this case we see that there is a waveform starting at 0 the second waveform starts at 120 degrees third waveform starts at 240 degrees so here the output will be having three waveforms so in this lecture we are going to see the operation of a three phase inverter where the input is going to be dc and the output will be having three output waveforms each displaced by 120 degrees the power circuit diagram of the three phase voltage source inverter is given here this is an inverter operating in 180 degree mode the input voltage is dc the output is going to be a ac three phase means there will be three waveforms available which are shifted from each other by 120 degrees usually the ac output is given to a ac motor some of the basic uh, things to be understood before understanding the operation of this circuit is there are six switches available t1 to t6 the numbering of the switches is given as t1 t3 t5 for the upper group t4 t6 t2 for the lower group it is given like this for the better understanding and the very first point is in 180 degree mode of operation each device will conduct for 180 degrees that means if t1 conducts for 180 degrees the next 180 degrees t4 will conduct then t3 conducts for 180 degrees the next 180 degrees t6 will conduct similarly is the case for t5 and t2 in 180 degree mode of operation at any point of time three devices will be on for that a particular sequence is followed if two switches from the upper group are conducting one from the lower group will conduct if two group uh, two lower group acs are conducting one from the upper group will conduct one more important point is the switches in the same leg are not turned on at the same time if they are turned on at the same time it will give a direct short circuit to the source so that should be avoided and there is a particular sequence followed for the operation in 180 degree mode for example 5 6 1 will conduct in the very first 60 degrees let us see the operation step by step the sequence of steps is given here in the first step 5 6 1 conducts then 6 1 2 then 1 2 3 2 3 4 3 4 5 4 5 6 this is explained in the the points at which the gating pulses are given for the various thyristors is shown in this image if the gate pulse is given for the thyristor 1 at 0 degrees the gate pulse for the thyristor 2 is given at 60 for 3 at 120 for 4 at 180 and for 5 at 240 for uh, thyristor 6 at 300 degrees again at 360 degrees the gate pulse for the first thyristor is given so each thyristor is given the gating pulse at an interval of 60 degrees with uh, steps like this steps 1 and 2 is shown here that is in the very first uh, 60 degrees 0 to 60 degrees of the operation three switches are on 5 6 1 is on so 5 6 and 1 are shown as closed the next operation this 5 is commutated and 6 1 and 2 are conducting the next step we see that 6 is commutated 1 2 and 3 are conducting and here in the next step we have 
2 3 4 conducting so if you see in any uh, step two switches from upper up upper arm and the one from the lower arm is conducting or one from the upper and two from the lower are conducting so similarly steps 5 and 6 is also shown here 3 and 5 from upper 4 from the lower or 2 from the lower and 1 from the upper arm are conducting. Let us see the step 1 operation of the 180 degree mode. In step 1, the switches 5, 6, 1 are closed. So here they are shown as closed switches 5 closed, 6 closed and 1 is closed. So when the supply is given, the current will flow through these switches. The first path we see here is the current flows from the source it goes through T1 and it goes through the point A through the load and goes to B and it comes back through the switch to the source. So this is the current path followed by the switches 1 and 6 when 1 and 6 are closed. There is another current path through the switch 5. Current flows through T5 goes to the load through C and it comes back again through T6. So we can see that there are two current paths but the total current from the source is I1. Let us see the operation of this as 1 by 1. Let us see the current flow through the switches 1 and 6 that is from the source through the thyristor T1 it goes through the load through the A, uh, A, O, B and back to the source through T6. When it is following this path we can see the equivalent circuit like this. The current is flowing through T1 it reaches the point A, goes through the impedance Z, goes through this point O, then goes through the other impedance which is connected to B and it is coming back to the source. If we take the current path through the switch 5, it is from the source through the switch 5, it goes through the point C, O and it goes back to B. From there it comes like this to T6 back to the source. So the equivalent circuit here is the current is flowing through C, T5 it flows through C, O, B back to the source. Here it is going through two impedances. The current is getting split into two parts, one in T1, one in T5. The both the switches when they are conducting the current paths through 1 and 6 and through 5 and 6 are shown here. So the combined current flow is shown in this picture. So the combined equivalent circuit would be the current flowing from the source to the load will have an equivalent circuit like this. That is the impedance in the A and impedance in the C phase are connected parallel like this and the impedance in the B phase is connected like this when the switches 5, 6, 1 are closed. So we can derive an expression for the current as well as the voltages VAO, VBO and VCO for this. We know that the current flowing is given by the voltage by the impedance. Here we have two impedances connected in parallel. So the equivalent impedance would be half of it. Two impedances of the same value connected as Z and Z. The total impedance uh, will be Z by 2 and here it is Z. So the current can be obtained as current is equal to the voltage Vs divided by the sum of the impedances Z by 2 plus Z. So that is equivalent to 2 by 3 into Vs by Z. This is the current in the circuit. Let us now find out what is the voltage VAO, VBO and 
VCO. Here this total voltage is Vs and it is split among uh, the three phases like this A and C because they are connected in parallel they will have a voltage of one third of the total voltage and this will have the value two third. Here we see that VAO is equivalent to the current into the impedance Z by 2 that is same for VCO also. So I1 into Z by 2 or I1 we are substituting this value 2 by 3 Vs, Vs by Z into Z by 2 we get VAO as Vs by 3 that is one third of the source voltage is given for the impedances because they are connected in parallel like this. The balance is two third of the voltage is available for the other phase. So VBO similarly uh, we can write it as minus VOB because the voltage is we are writing it as VBO but what is available here is VOB. So minus of VOB will be minus of I1 into the impedance is it and if we uh, calculate we get this as minus 2 by 3 Vz. So we, if we have two impedances connected in parallel they have one third of the voltage available across it two thirds available across the load. So for a period from 0 to 60 degrees when the steps 5, 6, 1 are closed we are seeing the value of VAO, VBO and VCO. The value of VAO, VCO both are same as one third of Vs value of VBO is minus of two thirds of the source voltage. Similarly for each step we can derive an equivalent value for VAO, VBO, VCO and that can be plotted. So here this is a consolidated values of VAO, VBO and VCO for the step zero, uh, 1 that is 0 to 60 degrees when the switches 5, 6, 1 are closed. Similarly, when the switches 6, 1 and 2 are closed, we can derive an equivalent circuit and then find the value of VAO, VBO, VCO. And here as from the diagram, we can see that VAO should be two thirds of the source voltage and uh, this, uh, this should be uh, one third and because uh, it is uh, VOB, OC, we are taking VBO, VCO. So it should be minus of one third of the source voltage. Similarly for the step 3, 1, 2 and 3 are closed. When we have a equivalent circuit drawn it will be like this and here we see that VAO, VPO both are same and they will be having only one third of the source voltage and this VCO is minus VOC and that is minus 2 Vs by 3 minus two thirds of the source voltage. For the next step when the switches that is uh, 2, 3, 4 are closed, we can derive an equation. We can derive an equation for VBO, VAO, VCO like this because VAO and VCO are connected parallelly and we have the loads connected parallelly. They will have only one third of the voltage and that too it is in the, uh, because it is connected, we are considering VAO, VCO instead of VOA and OC, it is minus Vs by 3 and here VBO is two thirds of the source voltage. So for each step we can see like this we have the circuit, we have the equivalent circuit and we have the values of VAO, VBO, VCO for each step. So when we uh, put it in a table like this VAO, VBO, VCO we get Vs by 3, 2 Vs by 3, Vs by 3 and the repetition as minus Vs by 3, minus 2 Vs by 3, minus Vs by 3. For each step it is like this. Uh, to uh, remember it better, VAO is starting at 0 to 60 degrees as Vs by 3. VBO will be starting at 120 degrees as Vs by 3. VCO will be starting at 240 degrees as Vs by 3. The sequence followed is Vs by 3, 2 Vs by 3, Vs by 3, minus Vs by 3, minus 2 Vs by 3 and minus Vs by 3 to, uh, draw, uh, to uh, write the values in a table like this. It is easier to remember this way. And uh, when it goes to, uh, when this is plotted on the waveform, it will look. When the values derived in the table are plotted in the graph, we can see that VAO is starting as Vs by 3 at 0, then 
the value of vs by 3 has become 2 vs by 3 at 60 to 120 interval and it is again becoming vs by 3 we have derived these values in each step in the very first step we have seen that bao and vco in the interval 0 to 60 degrees had a value of vs by 3 and vs by 3 here pbo had a value of minus 2 vs by 3 which is shown here so for each step from the table if it is plotted we get a pattern like this and we can see that VAO is starting at 0 with VS by 3 and following a pattern. VBO has the same pattern but it starts at 120 degrees and VCO also has the same pattern but starting at 240 degrees. These values VAO, VBO, VCO are all the phase values of the voltages. The thyristors which are in operation during 0 to 60 degrees period is 5, 6, 1. The very first step we have seen here, it is indicated here. In the second step, 0, 60 to 120 degrees, the switches 6, 1, 2 are conducting which is also shown and the sequence of steps is followed. For getting the line voltage waveforms, VAB, VBC and BCA, we have to for, subtract VBO value from VAO to get VAB. Load voltages VAB, VBC, VCA can be derived from VAO, VBO, VCO like this. VAB is equal to VAO minus VBO. VBC is VBO minus VCO. VCA is VCO minus VC. VCA is VCO minus VAO. So for the first step we get VAB, VBC, VCA values as VS minus Vs and 0 respectively. If we want to get VAB here, we see that we are subtracting VBO from VAO. In the first interval 0 to 60 degrees, the VAB value is minus Vs by 3 minus of minus 2 Vs by 3. So, we get Vs and for the next interval 60 to 120 degree, the value is 2 Vs by 3 minus of minus Vs by 3 again it becomes Vs. So for each 60 degree interval if the value of VBO is subtracted from VAO we will get VAB and the line voltage waveform looks like this. The line voltage waveforms VBC and VCA are also shown here. They also follow the same pattern as VAB as uh, told for the phase voltages, VAB, VAB starts with the value of Vs at 0, VBC starts with Vs value at 120 degrees and VCA starts at 240 degrees, follows the same pattern. VAB is obtained as VAO minus VBO, VBC as VBO minus VCO, VCA as VCO minus VAO. Hope this explains the operation of a three-phase voltage source inverter in 180 degree mode. Thank you.